to record now. Um, and you'll be able to share this recording session with any other team members. We're also going to have an additional open house set up for tomorrow um, afternoon as well. Um, that is going to be at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, we also highly encourage you to schedule a follow-up one-on-one with our team and yours. So allowing us to access your needs, um, see if data discovery is a solution that you're interested in and makes sense for your practice. To schedule those, I'm gonna drop a link in um, the chat and I'm going to share it here too, but it is, um, if you can reach out to Mary Taormina at, and her email address is M-T-A-O-R-M-I-N-A at mgma.com. Um, then we can schedule those one-on-one -on -one sessions with you all um, going forward. So just to give a little quick background first before I um, go on to introduce the rest of the team, um, <clears throat> MGMA has uh, started back, if you're familiar, we started with the data dive um, and our benchmarking tools and products. So coming from that, fast forwarding, if you remember, if, you're, if you've been around and you remember we had the um, printed reports, back in the 80s, then in <clears throat> over the last 10 years, we went from the printed reports to the CDs. And then we also launched our data dive tool in 2008. <clears throat> when we built data dive, we wanted to provide a more robust and convenient and interactive experience with our data. And so that provides great intel into benchmarks needed to run a successful practice. Um, and most it would focus on physician comp and productivity for retraining and, re and retaining recruiting um, physicians. But then over the years, we developed our cost and revenue uh, and operations surveys, which really set us apart in the industry as there's fewer groups out there that capture that sort of data. Um, so this data provides the ability to benchmark practice performance and be more efficient, profitable, and productive um, in terms of your financial health. And while it's very valuable, it's been a goal of ours to provide our data um, where you can have more of a real-time analysis. So that's where data discovery comes into play. We partnered with White Space Health. We have some of their um, employees on this call here that I'll introduce in a moment. Um, and what we did together is we developed data discovery, which takes our cost to revenue and practice operations data to the next level. It shows your practice real time and how your information is compared to MGMA's information or our industry data. Um, so it's equipped with KPIs and alerts to highlight those areas you need to pay attention to and areas of success. Um, it syncs to your EMR system and then pinpoints those low and high performance areas based on your KPI targets. And then shows you those opportunities and what those top contributors are that are affecting those KPIs. So with that, I'm just going to introduce the team that we have on here briefly. Um, so Liz Gurley is one of our senior account managers, um, or I'm sorry, data strategists on our team. We also have Mary Taramina, so she is our coordinator on our team. Jareen Matthew is with White Space Health, so he is our the VP of product with White Space, and then Ryan Greenhaw is VP of sales with White Space. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to you, Ryan. Thanks, Lauren. I'm going to share my screen and just quickly walk through on the base of what this product is, just to set the stage um, for Jareen, who's going to really open up things and dive in and give you a look, which is what's most important here. Um, but just so you all know what you're getting into. Um, so data discovery at the heart is a really intelligent business intelligence tool um, that we feel goes beyond what a lot of people feel they know as traditional analytics, reporting, dashboards. So um, at the heart, how the tool's going to work is going to connect into what other systems you have. Um, you're always, we're always going to want to start with your EMR and patient management system because that's going to be the heart of the, your data. Um, if you have multiple EMR patient management system, there's even a bigger need for this as you're probably not having a lot of congruency among your data. Um, but once we've connected and got you live, we, we encourage you to bring in other systems as well. Um, if you have data that's not contained in there, such as clearinghouse data, general ledger data, accounting, um, you know, pop health or workforce or 
Um, anything else that I haven't mentioned here that you feel you're losing, um, you know, by not having, you know, in a centralized place we can bring into this. Um, once we have this proprietary tool that's going to pull this out of whatever data set you have, and there's always going to be a bunch of questions here um, right at this time of, can I work with GE? Can I work with Athena? Can I work with NextGen? And the answer is going to be yes across the board for all of them. Um, we have a proprietary method of integration, and um, I'm not trying to skirt that question for anyone. I'm happy to walk through how it um, specifically might have nuances in your system, but the general um, answer is we can work with any of these uh, patient management systems and have worked with just about all of them at this point. And the reason is we don't need them typically um, to do what we do. As long as you have access to your data, it's, it's I describe as more of a political component than a, a technical component. Um, we can pull your data and, and do some really cool things with it. And, and the advantage here is once we've put it into this format is, is the ability to reorganize it and do what EMRs don't do. Uh, e EMRs, patient management systems, were meant to bill and to meet meaningful use. They weren't meant for business optimization. And so what this will do is reorganize your data and give it from the lens that you can run your business from. And you'll, and you'll see this here in the demonstration. Um, the other nice thing is we'll be able to put it into a format that we'll be able to do some really cool things um, that we're building on to the tool for down the road and um, ability to go beyond the analytics and I'm happy to dive into that for you all. So traditional analytics is what you're going to know of as dashboards, reports, KPIs. It's a visualization of the data. Sometimes you can buy visualization tools like a Tableau or a Power BI and um, we go beyond that. So the way that we look at this is how do operators run our business? Um, and the reason we at Whitespace partnered with MG, it was a fantastic combination of former administrators and former revenue cycle leads, which is really the two elements, uh, rev cycle and operational, that you'll see this tool surround. Um, but we've put the reports, the views, the customizations in a way that you need to run your business. What are the questions that you need to ask? Um, we do things like quantifying revenue opportunities for you. Look at, you know, showing you where there's opportunity for you to increase revenue or decrease cash. Um, we've built some really cool tools that um, join on to this, such as uh, appointment optimization and denials resolution. Um, but the real difference here is giving you the ability to see the data in a way that's going to actually give you answers. And one of the best ways that this will happen is something that's kind of a virtual consultant you'll see throughout the tool. One of the biggest problems we've seen in competitive tools and markets is it takes a lot of time to ferret for the data and then to interpret it. And so we'd run into CFOs that said, hey, you know, I only log in once a month and I want to see where my money is. I don't want to have to go digging. Um, and so this virtual consultant is, is something that you can click on at any time. And, and it uses narrative based um, intelligence, a, a form of AI um, that will actually talk back to you, you know, in an example like days in AR. Um, you don't need to know what the definition of days and AR is if you're a CFO, but you can click on this tool and it'll say your days and AR are trending negatively because of these physicians, you know, these um, CPT codes, these financial classes, and actually give you some context and recommendation as to what's going on and how you can fix it. So a couple of things I'm going to point out. This is the last slide here before we jump into the demo. So the dashboards, reports, KPIs, kind of the way the data is presented is all customizable. So that CFO is going to have a very different view from your scheduling manager, per se, or um, the billing manager. So everyone has their own homepage. Everyone can design alerts. So if you're driving into the office and you want to get pinged, and I'll use days and AR again, that it's training negatively. You can respond back and let one of your colleagues know, and they can drill all the way down to a detail level. So the system accordions in and out as high or as low as you need. So you can have the governance level dashboards that you need, but also get all the way down to a detail a transaction, a CPT level to do the work that you need. Benchmarking is really the a, a big differentiator of this product. Um, as mentioned, the data dive product, for those of you familiar with, that gives you the levels that you're at at the MGMA par in various areas. We've actually integrated that intelligence into the tool. And so 
not only can you compare how your practice is performing, but you have the unique aspect here to get a live view of how you're performing comparatively to the market. I talked a little bit about advanced analytics and you'll see this in the demo. We've invested heavily in AI to do things beyond analytics, like looking ahead into the future and predictive and prescriptive components. Everything can be exported. So if, if any of you are responsible for providing reports to someone above you, or asking for reports for your managers below you, you can automate this function out of the tool. Um, and so you get these in your inbox, you know, um, once a month or whatever makes sense in any format. We do have an ad hoc tool. Um, if, I mentioned Power BI. So there's a version of Power BI that comes with this. So the tool you'll see here today is 100% proprietary. It's 100% the, the white space and MGMA technology because it's faster than other tools in the market. But we also have a building tool. So if you have analysts or technical folks on your team that want to still build their own reports, that module will come as well. And then everything is customizable for a role user security standpoint. Uh, we have clients that are very large billing companies that have, you know, hundreds of different clients within the clients or multi-location practices, or we, and we have a lot of very single location, smaller practices. And so um, everything can be customized to fit the organization. And then lastly, I'll point out this tool has a fantastic ROI. Um, and it's something that um, if you want to see a private demo, your MGMA team can contact, or you can work with your MGMA team member on uh, to not only get pricing following the demonstration, but we can give you a snapshot of we think the effect of the tool um, it, that can make with you. So um, happy to answer any questions either now or following it. Would love as well to um, schedule private demos if you don't see enough of what you we have today. But thank you for listening and uh, I'll pass it on to Doreen. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Lauren, before I get started, I'm going to ask permission. Uh, I can grab the screen here, but any questions uh, in the chat or from anyone before we get started, Lauren? Nope, it doesn't look like there's any questions at this time and no hands raised. Okay, great. So I am sharing my screen. I hope you all can see me. As you log into the product, MGMA has focused on two areas, financial revenue cycle areas uh, to manage your practice and operations, which includes areas of scheduling, patient volume management, referrals, and managing where inefficiencies are within your process of uh, inflow of patients. I'm going to start at a high level here. I'm going to my homepage and just get you oriented with the product. We've got a uh, different library of solutions in terms of bar charts, line charts. Uh, at any point, if you pick a chart, you can actually click on the data and select what you want to see and what you do not want to see just by selecting these legends here. So if you want to see two or three data points at a time, that's how you navigate through it. Filter options are available. So you can filter by practice, location, department, uh, and when you expand, you can get more options that are built into the system. Uh, the data, the system has a capability for you to export data uh, into images for your presentations or Excels for other data reporting needs. And uh, you have multiple views. You can look at data in a weekly format, just click on there and you can get into the uh, quarterly or yearly format, uh, whatever you want to look at. In some cases, we even go down to a daily reporting. So daily, weekly, monthly formats are available. And finally, getting down to the details was important. So all you need to do is click on the graph and it gives you options to drill down by financial class, in this case of volume, and then look at volumes for Aetna or Medicare. And I'm going to look at encounters with charges. I can just slice that there. I can see my Medicare volume is high. Dig down a little further to get into the details uh, in this. Let me show you another example where I can walk you through details. And then Jareen, we do have one question. Um, Ali, if you can, I think I unmuted you. Did you have a question? Yeah, I do. So thank you for the introduction. Um, I just, so this seems, I have a couple of questions actually. This seems like mostly toward revenue cycle management and billing, right? To essentially create a dashboard or put all the data together 
to, to make it more visual, right? And potentially compare it to the data that you all have from your end, correct? Uh, this is revenue cycle, financial and operations management. We don't do mm -hmm. clinical analytics yet. Uh, as you know, MJMA has been in the world of uh, working through helping practices run their business more uh, and less, we've not done more clinical analytics, if that's what you're asking. Uh, you will see that come here in the uh, near future. Uh, the second part of your question, the data is your data. We connect to your practice management system through an integration, which Ryan explained a few minutes ago. And then you get to compare it with MJMA benchmark data uh, as I'm pointing mm -hmm. on my screen here. So you see your performance, so this becomes your dashboard, your report card with bumped up with MJMA data points. So great, thank you. And I really, uh, thank you for clarifying that. I wasn't really asking for the clinical one because that gets a bit more complicated. Um, what I'm asking now, the, so how long the integration takes uh, for someone who has a simple system, not necessarily with GE and this complex system. And the other question is, um, in terms of multi-specialty practices, how do you benchmark that? Do you create multiple dashboards for, for example, inpatient versus outpatient versus behavior health kind of a deal? Yeah, great, great question. So our typical integration is uh, anywhere from uh, six to eight weeks, depending on the data availability, it might uh, go eight becomes 10, 12 weeks, you know, depending on data and your cooperation with the IT, the IT team that we are working with. Some clients don't have access to the data and there are other solutions that we built around it on how we can extract and share reports and uh, pull data from existing reports. So it is a very custom, and uh, I'm sorry, it is a very custom solution depending on what EMR you have. As you can appreciate, uh, every EMR is built differently, but our average is uh, six to eight weeks uh, to uh, get you going after the data is made available to us. Uh, the second part of your question, benchmark, MGMA pulls data and gets reports from customers across the country, including single specialty and multi-specialty. Uh, including inpatient and outpatient uh, when for the professional side, right? Uh, and that data is bumped against your provider specialty. So during implementation, we will ask you actually, honestly, how many providers, what are their specialty? And then map that to the MJMA national uh, list of specialties. So you might call somebody a cardiologist, but MJMA has it under cardiology providers, right? So just a simple mapping to understand what, where does it fall under the MGMA categories. And uh, then you get ranked, or sorry, you get bumped or benchmarked against that category of providers. And, and I'm assuming the integration will take six to eight weeks per individual EMR. And I'm assuming that's an additional cost beyond data, data, data discovery slash the dashboard. Yeah, happy to go through that details with you. Uh, uh, on depending on how many implementation, how many EMR systems you have. That's the beauty of this. Uh, I don't know if you caught on to that, but the ability to pull data from multiple sources and bring it into a single source and to normalize it and have the same language and lingos across the product, uh, that is the ability. Depending on the EMR systems, some can be parallel, uh, but some of them may be one after the other. So we will solution that out and give you a roadmap of the implementation uh, timelines. Right, yeah, that was exactly my point. And what I was asking uh, is to pull all these things together in one place to kind of yep, take a look absolutely. at performances from different areas. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think you answered my question. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, one of the good things about that question is when you have multiple sources, you can actually have a global filter here and you can filter by location one, location two. In this case, you can see I've got a mid physician group where there's an Atlantic hospital group, and there's a medical director who likes to look at five locations uh, or surgery centers. So when I select one of those options, it the entire product filters down to just the data points of that EMR system or that location or that specialty. Uh, it can be set up for different by based on different parameters. Now, uh, apart from having consolidated data points come up and the ability to uh, get into the details, and I'm going to show that again because uh, I'm not sure if everyone caught that, but when you 
take get into any of the charts, you're able to click on the data points, the visualization, you can select what you want to see, and then select by financial class, go down by payer, and then finally get down to the detail. So the, the other important thing for us was to make details available to the pro, uh, end users. And this acts like a spreadsheet because many of us are so used to working out of spreadsheets. So you can actually drag and drop and pivot this out and look at the data by specialty and you know sort it out and all that. So you have the ability to get down to the details on any of the charts and that was important to us. And then we also created a table view which converts that chart into a pivot table real time. So you don't have to put it into Excel. You can manipulate it and uh, if you're familiar with Excel drag and drop concepts, you know, pivoting for, you can do that here on the fly and look at your data in different perspectives uh, without having to rerun the reports. The second most important thing for us was helping our customers run their business more effectively. So as I'm going to show you here, I'll show you what, how our KPIs are built. And then the third part, I'll show you how we really solve <clears throat> some use cases of how we really solve business problems. Uh, so KPIs were built, we had these red, yellow stoplights, uh, red, yellow, green kind of approach to so stoplights on the top, you can set your KPIs, subscribe to it. And then most recently, we built these smart cards that you see in many of the pages. I'm going to go to my, I'm in my home page showing you the smart cards, you can see some of them turn red, some of them are in yellow and green, you can actually decide what makes it turn red, yellow, green by deciding what your goals and your thresholds are. So if I want my billing to take place in three days and not more than four days, uh, now you see that it's five days makes it, says that it's, um, it turns it red. It also tells me that it's going up and it's gone up by 1.1 days since the last time this was reported. It tells you what the MGMA benchmark is. You see that here in very clearly that MGMA providers across the country are at 3.3 days. One other thing I forgot to point out in the charts, if you see the salmon color MGMA median, that's again at a chart level, we provide the MGMA median or the MGMA benchmark. Coming back here, when you see this, you are able to get a little visual of the trends. So you can see whether this is a one-time issue going up or it's been going up consistently. Uh, and in this case, going up, but coming down. And finally, the most important one was sitting in front of a customer and telling them or sitting in front of your leaders and understanding what is causing this uh, KPI to behave this way. And we found that it takes a lot of time for people, to, first of all, to get the data it takes a long time, right? And we've made that very easy. But once you have the data, the question is validating and then understanding what is the problem behind your business performing this way. So with a single click, we provided a AI-like concept where natural language generation takes place. And it tells you the breakdown of the top contributors impacting your billing lag. So Dr. Patel's claims are built out 15 days. Dr. Doubtfire's claims are taking seven days. Dr. Chang's claims are going out only in four days. And if you take the same lens, for, take the same KPI, but pay a lens, it tells you Secure Horizon is getting billed out late. The next one that you need to focus on is uh, ABU, uh, NECA Southwest, Option Care, Anthem, Texas Health. Uh, as you can see here, it tells you where the focus area should be. So you don't spend time analyzing and diagnosing the problem. This form of diagnostic analytics helps you understand what is the root cause. In some case, for example, in AR, we even linked the denial reasons to it. So you know what are the denial reasons causing your AR to be that high. Again, you have the same payers. Who are the payers sitting in your AR0120 and how bad is it? We've also done CPT. So what services are not getting paid fast enough and sitting in your AR? You get that in a single click. Most of the time, providers spend a lot of time on this, analysts, and they have leaders of revenue cycle, finance, sitting in slicing and dicing the data to get to the story. And here we provide that with a single click. Any questions on here? Uh, if, uh, before I move on, I know that was a lot of information. Lauren, are we off mute for everyone to just ask questions if needed? 
Yes, I don't see any hands right, raising to ask to, to talk, so I, we can continue. Oh, All right. hold on here. There is one. Karen, let me open it up for you. Hi. With the no-show metric, if you click on that, will it drill down and show you by whom, for which provider? Yeah, so same thing. Whenever you see the uh, this symbol here, it gets down to the details. So it breaks it down as the top contributors who are the providers whose no-show is high. And in the case of no-show, it also tells you what kind of appointments are mostly having no-shows. Uh, but if you were specifically look, looking at trends, you would go into the operations module and we've actually got every KPI, we built it in a way that you have a detailed chart of your KPI. So if I if we were picking no shows, the no show which we just spoke about is here again. And then when you scroll down, the no show is actually a chart. Uh, so there's a detailed chart. You can see the trend of the no shows. You can slice this by location, specialty, provider, time. Uh, but just by clicking on this, you will see options like show me the show me the breakdown by practice. In this case, we've even broken it down and giving you some patient details. So quickly, you want to see who are the patients who did not show up. That is made available now. But uh, if I were to go back and say, show me the specialties of that August that had the most no-shows, you get that insight very quickly. And then which are the pro who are the providers in that specialty? So Dr. Chang, Dr. Doubtfire uh, are the ones. So you can see the various metrics, like what are the no kept appointments, the no-shows, and scheduled appointments. So if you just focus on no-shows, slice that there, and you can see Dr. Downey has the maximum no-show rate uh, of 4.97%, uh, and 99 patients did not show up for that period out there. So within a few seconds itself, you get that information without having to spend a lot of time uh, running the data again. And then, Jareen, I think we have another question, Paul. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you. Um, I just have a question about integration with the EHRs, um, and maybe you're going to get to that more a little bit later. Um, but is that an automatic um, uh, back and forth uh, integration with the e e uh, EMRs or EHRs, um, or is that something we would need to provide data from the EMR? No, so we take the ownership of uh, during implementation. Uh, this is similar to the question uh, we had from Ali. Uh, we connect with multiple EMR systems and pull it into a single source. Uh, but specifically to your question, Paul, uh, it is not manual if the data set is made available to us. Uh, what I mean by that is most of the times your EMR vendors allow you to go through the SQL and pull data into various reporting tools. Uh, we are familiar with most of the systems out there, so we'll be happy to engage with you on a one-on-one -on -one and talk through some of that. And then once we establish that connection, it is a nightly, daily feed. You don't have to manually do anything. Okay, thank you very much. Great. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go into one of the areas here. Uh, let's pick financial revenue cycle area and let's talk about AR and denials. Uh, so if I'm looking at this, my KPI says my overall collection rate uh, adjusted should, which should be like 90, in my 90s, it's only in my 71%. What my intuition is find out what payers are delaying payment and not paying fast enough. So I could click there, look at the payers who are, not, who are at the lowest or the highest. And here in this case, I can see Texas and human force are on the 60s. So it gives me some insight of payers that need to be looked into. Uh, as a point of uh, discussion, I'm going to pick one of these pairs uh, and show you that. So let's start with payment trends. Uh, like I said, pick a chart. And in this case, I'm going to, I want to understand my payment trends overall as a business. And I can see here uh, the payment trends, the information that comes out, and I can see payments went back up and then went, went down again. My next intuition is let's look at GCR payment percentage or NC, uh, uh, the net payment percentage, see that trend here as well, able to drill down. 
by financial class, sorry, uh, this drill down by financial class into my net payments. And I can see Aetna is in 56. Sorry, let me slice off this data. I'll just show the green bars. So Aetna is at 56, that's low. Uh, Medicaid is overpaid maybe, and Medicare is at 49. So for this period, I'm seeing low payments. Maybe I expect it to be high. Start off with payment lag. Payment. So if my payments are low, did I bill out fast enough? Where my claim creation problem was it a billing problem, or was it a payment lag, the delay from the payers coming, uh, sending payments in time? So let's start with looking at payers. I can see the payment lag, and there is a dip here. Obviously, this is all dummy data, so the stories don't totally align. But just to conceptually show you how you can easily look into the data points, and here itself, you can dig into the details. Uh, I think that's not activated. So I'm going to go into the next one. We have waterfall reports. So you can slice the data point by any of the payers, let's say Group Force United, and you can see the waterfall patterns, whether how much is being paid for month one, month two, month three. My typical intuition is let me check my AR as well. So when I go into the AR, we built out the AR reports. Uh, I'm going to drag and drop and make it bigger here. Just moving it like this. Now I can see my AR trend and I can see that AR has been increasing since the month of May. Uh, let's dig into the details. So click there. We've linked the reason, denial reasons associated in the AR. So uh, when you look that, you'll know what are your top denials when that AR increased that month, the top denials of that month, and that's maximum benefit exhausted and coding related issues. Uh, I'm also able to look at my AR in different formats like AR by insurance, and one of my favorite one is uh, AR in different buckets. So this is the one where you can see the AR and the FTEs associated to each bucket. So in this view, you can see your AR broken 30 to 60, 60 to 90, all the way to 120. So if I had my team working on AR 90 plus, I shouldn't be seeing this trend because it was increasing and then decreased, then it's increasing again. Again, I can click down, look at the denial reasons for that category. And for those buckets, I can see again, benefits exhausted, coding related issues are the top problem. But this time I have a better insight that it is in my 60 plus bucket, not the other bucket. So it's recent claims that are not being worked. It's 60 plus, so it probably just got denied. It's not that old and it's gone through, these are new denials that are popping up. So within a few minutes itself, I was able to establish that I've got a problem with my benefits and coding issues. Uh, and that happened in the past 60 days, uh, 30 to 60 days for services maybe I performed during the summer. We can further validate this by going into denials and you can see more information that comes from account, denial percentage, denial value, uh, same thing here, you can see the denial trend. Uh, in the previous screen, you were looking at AR trends. This is just purely denied count and dollars. And again, the story aligns where it seems to be increasing. Uh, let me pick reason drilling down into July. And uh, let me get rid of some of those extra busyness there. Just look at the amount of denied and similarly coding related and non-covered services uh, again. It's dummy data, so you might see some mix up there, but you're able to pinpoint and understand that you have problems in your coding related. And keep in mind, at any point, you can drill down further and know that this is a Medicare is the highest one. And finally, you can dig down further to get the details. One important report we've created is to tell you, are you doing good work and recovering on your denials? So what we've done here is, out of the denials that took place, and we were looking at the month of July, what has been paid, what's been left in the table, written off, or moved to a patient responsibility. Uh, so if I were to just slice this and just look at my denial conversion to a payment, not patient responsibility, I can see that the trend here, and obviously maybe new claims need to be worked further, but if I pick April, uh, Sorry, let me go back. 
I see 30% of my denials are getting converted to a payment. In the month of February, only 34% converted to a payment. The rest, the rest are remaining in the AR, not being worked, or it's being moved to patient responsibility or contractually written off. So there is a problem. Obviously, again, this is dummy data, but there's a lot of write-offs or AR not being worked is, my, is the insight I'm giving, give, uh, given from this. And now I can dig down by practice, by specialty, but by digging down into reasons, it tells me that the main problem where my denials are not getting converted, you can see how global and bundling issues, we saw non-covered, uh, we saw benefits exhausted, like 0% of benefits and uh, exhausted are getting converted. So that is a deeper coding problem or provider documentation problem, any of those, right, which stems into poor coding going into the claims. Uh, there's also other side of the story, right? Eligibility denials are not getting converted to a payment. This is a two-step problem. One is why do we have, why are they not converted? Why are people not working on this fast enough? You can talk to the front office manager and have conversations by just digging down into the details and working with them. But the other question you may ask is why am I even having eligibility denials? What kind of front office process improvements can take place so that I can avoid these denials? Same thing with authorization, a lot of write-offs uh, happening, no conversion to a payment. Uh, again, this is dummy data, but it gives you insight about services are being performed that are not authorized and nobody knows how to work it probably. And it's a lot, everything that's denied for authorization in this, in this odd case is being written off. I'm going to pause here, but that was a use case of how you can start from poor payments, going digging into AR and finally pinpointing that you have major process problems with coding or authorizations or, uh, and able to dig down into where you can work with your leadership team to improve the processes. Uh, Lauren, can we open up for some questions? Yep, I don't see any questions at this time. Um, no hands raised. Just checking the whole list here. Oh, hold on. I have one from Ali. There you go. Hey, uh, sorry to dominate the question thing here. No, but you're, hey, you're, you're only two out of uh, the other, so you're just one on two. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you said something very interesting. So just, I guess, the source of a truth when it comes to the data. So does that come, let's say, for example, in our practice, we outsource the ability. Okay. Right? And, and one of the concerns, and the reason I'm here, is the fact that I don't have visual on what what's happening the billing is doing and how it's doing and all that stuff so this would be very helpful and to benchmark it against the national average would be fantastic of course but but just to get the baseline of to understand how the billing perform but if you're getting the data from the billing team how accurate is that data and do you validate it with a different source again this is very important to me because i've been working on this for a long time even with a data analyst in-house and we're not getting to the bottom of this and I'm just yeah. trying to figure out how you approach this issue and I, I, how you've I done this in the past. Yep, no, great question. So I generally don't recommend we go to a team to get data unless uh, there is a, you know, you cannot get it from a system. So we prefer, we'll probably get into a little more solutioning, but your scenario is not a new scenario. Like there would be companies who have a billing system uh, or an EMR system practice management system, but the billing team works out of a different system, uh, potentially. And right. in this scenario, we pull data from two systems. We, we do not want to uh, work out of a data given to us. We would establish a connection with the system. You, you open an in, introduction to the billing team uh, and we pull data from the system. Uh, if they use a different system, but hopefully many cases I've seen that billers work out of your system and your system is, becomes a uh, source of truth. So they are not going to touch any of the data points. It's just going to come in the definitions, the parameters all are set by you during implementation. So you see full transparency what's in your system. And if you want to cross check with the data that they give, you want us to pull data from their system, we can do that as well. 
Right. So you're you're validating the data from different source, but the billing team, for the most cases, I think the billing team is the same as the EMR, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And when you if say they work, do they work out of your system in your use case uh, scenario? So it's, it's really complicated. I wish I could simplify it. But so you got an EMR that's in the office for the PCP and we have, you know, like I said, some multi-specialty. You have EMRs in different facilities, like a nursing home and hospitals and behavioral health hospitals. So how does that all come together? I mean, I guess maybe we, we could kind of schedule a one-on-one yeah, um, call. We, I think that would be very beneficial to yeah. see if this is a fit for us and, and you and all that. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. And I it's highly still- recommend that. Just like, sorry, this is Ryan from a distance. Like, I, I think that's going to be a custom layout, you know, which is what we do. That's that's the value of this. But I, I'd really want to dig in and ask a little bit deeper discovery on that if you'd be willing to, to schedule a one-on-one. Um, then we can give you a more advanced demo, but also kind of customize the solution for you so you can specifically get those reports in the lens of validating your your RCM outsource team. That would be great. And I will, I think, reach out to the person, um, Mary, um, that she um, she gave her email at the beginning of this call and, and see if we could schedule that together. Yeah, and I'll ask her to, an, to add right Ryan now, and Jareen, and we'd be happy to join, so. Oh, great, yeah. All right, since we have 10 more minutes left, I'm going to take a, give you a two minute tour of the operation side. I spoke a lot about revenue cycle, uh, but let me walk you through the operation side as well. Uh, just a high level review of what we cover here, just because this product, there are not many products that do a deeper operational analytic dashboarding. So we wanted to take our time to show you this and uh, also let you know that this product covers more than operations. We actually connect to the cost information uh, and the salary and the uh, HR systems and pull in multiple data points for operation management. So you can see here revenue per visit, expense details coming in, uh, and then going into staffing allocation by location, work hour views. Of course, having that uh, GL feed or uh, cost feed, we are able to give you net income and loss and do the math, give you a mini PNL of your location. So allow you to be a mini CEO of the places you're in charge of and know whether you're doing good and how much uh, leakage is happening from a big picture perspective. From a financial, uh, sorry, patient access management, we start off with uh, everything that happens uh, from scheduling, patient uh, looking at pre-scheduling eligibility, the visit coming in, and also functionalities done by the patient access team following up to make sure checkout uh, at the time of checkout, are they scheduling patients? This is particularly important because you tend study shows that after patient leaves, uh, they tend to either get busy and not schedule and you it takes more effort to get them back in the door. It also looks at your active eligibility. And finally, for prior authorization, we will be able to monitor what is the authorization required and taken, give you some analysis of denials that is happening due to the eligibility or prior authorization not happening. And we also look at one piece where if you're going to have missed appointments because that authorization did not come on time. So what is the trend of you losing revenue because some front end process may be broken. Uh, we're also, if the data point is available, uh, time spent to complete the prior authorization is also something that we can want and show you. In the world of referrals, the, I think this is a very unique uh, uh, product that we've done where we look at outbound and inbound referrals and we look at the total referrals that's going out the door coming in and the ones that coming in, we look at it, is it internal? Like, you know, Ali has a multi-specialty. So is it coming from his internal rep providers or from external source or our patients self-referred? Then with what we've done is look, looked at any of those referrals and orders and seen if they've completed, if there are gaps. Uh, so if there's opportunities to make money because they're sitting out there in the open area. And then patients who are in going out, if there are external, external referrals happening, we are cross-checking that with uh, how many of those are completed and telling you, is there an opportunity for you to convert that into an internal referral? So we worked on some of that uh, cross-checking as well. 
scheduling, we went a little into this uh, earlier when we were talking about no shows, but overall new patients, rescheduling, cancellation, same day appointments and 48 day, 48 hour appointment rate and the details behind that. We also look at your booked slots, you know, your utilization of physicians uh, bookings and time slots. And that's important because uh, of, you know, utilization is the number one problem. If you're not utilizing it, that there's revenue that uh, you're losing. Uh, we give you details of the cancellations uh, by clicking in here, you get into the cancellation reasons that you logged in. So you know what your number one cancellation reason is within a few clicks and allows you to uh, take care of that problem. Uh, we spoke a little about the no-show cancellation pieces already. Uh, we do some telehealth comparison, how many patients came to telehealth versus in-person. And finally, one of my once, yep, this one is, uh, these two are my favorite ones. We've gone one step ahead and looked at your total missed appointments, whether it's canceled or no-shows, and then we convert that into the revenue opportunity that you lost. So there's some complex script that we had to write here where we said, if the patient did not show up and that booking where there was no other double booking or no other options of patient, ideally that that slot was completely empty and it is revenue that you're losing. So we convert that, converted that into the opportunity, as you can see here, the amount that you lost. And same thing here with the unfilled slots. Remember I told you utilization is very important. And if you're not utilizing your time slots, physician slots, you're losing revenue, you're leaving money on the table. So we do a open slot versus the kept appointments comparison and the revenue uh, that you're potentially losing, right? Again, it's a, giving you a direction of your potential revenue loss. Finally, cycle and lead time. Here we look at efficiencies in terms of how fast are you getting the patients in or in uh, through the system. Uh, so your third next available appointment uh, for new patients and uh, overall your throughput and number of minutes spent in this from check-in to check-out, what is the number of minutes spent uh, with the patient and then uh, all the other things leading to it in terms of the booked appointment percentage, lead time, and uh, non-optimal appointments. Uh, some of these are really interesting, which gives you the insight of where is it that you're having bottlenecks in your system and you're spending too much time with the patients. And here, finally, I'll just quickly show with this. Uh, it tells you the actual duration you schedule the patient. So you booked 48 hour slots, sorry, 45 minute slots or one hour slots. And in fact, when you add it up, with the, they spent more time with the patient. So this poor planning here as well, what could have been ideally in on paper, it looks like a 17 minute slot for Dr. Chang, but he's spent 89 minutes with patients. So it's why there's a lot of wait time because his bookings are not optimized and uh, when you look on the schedule or on paper, he should have used only 17 minutes of total bookings, but he's spent more time with the patient. And this could have multiple reasons, but it gives you insight about where schedules need to be optimized. That's a little insight and details into our operations and practice management piece, which has a tie up into revenue, right? If your patients are unhappy, if it's uh, overall, uh, inefficiencies that impacts your backend process as well, as you can see in some examples that I put out. All right, we're at the top of the hour with two minutes left. I'm going to pose for any more questions. Otherwise, like Ryan and Lauren said, we uh, think uh, we, I mean, we would like you to reach out to us. We're happy to schedule more one-on-one, -on -one, deeper dive into your practice, your scenario, uh, your situation, and look at how we can use this product to help your business out. Lauren, do you want to open up for questions? Sure, thank you. So I'm just going to take a look here to see if there's anyone else. I haven't seen any other hands raised or any other questions. Um, but yes, uh, as to what Jareen was saying, thank you again from us to, um, we just want to thank you for taking your time today. Let me open up my camera for a moment. <laughs> there we go. Um, and we know your time is valuable, so it's truly appreciated. Um, as mentioned earlier, we're here to help. If you um, do want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, please reach out to Mary 
Again, her email address is M-T-A-O-R-M -M as in Mary, I-N as in Nancy, A at MGMA.com. And then again, during the one-on-ones, it's our goal to learn more about you and your organization's needs, um, allowing us to propose a tailored solution for you and seeing if data discovery is the answer that you're looking for. Um, we will also, once again, have another session tomorrow at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. You're welcome to join again. At the end of tomorrow's session, we will release a recorded version of this meeting. Um, and so you'll be able to share with counterparts or anyone else that you think would be of interest. So feel free to join again tomorrow or watch for that recording. All right, thank you all for your time. Have a great day.